All right, sorry about that. That was a very important call about moon rocks or something, so I'm being sarcastic. All right, let's go back to the tensile test. 500 diameter tensile specimen. Stainless steel material. All right, so here you see they're loading it into the tensile, the load frame, which is all this other stuff. This big thing here is actually the chuck. That's part of the tensile test machine. But it's this uh, part right here. That is the actual tensile test specimen. That's what I tried to draw here. You can see it's threaded into, this is what's called the collet or the chuck. And there's another one up top here that's similar, OK? Engage tensile specimen between crosshairs. All right, Apply. now this device here is what's called the extensometer. This is has a very well calibrated instrument. Basically has two points that lock on to the tensile test specimen, kind of like at these two points, kind of like a little pinhole and it goes in there. And then as the specimen stretches, the amount of stretch is very accurately read through the extensometer and the amount of extension, okay? So it measures the change in length. To determine yield strength of material. So now they're going to start loading it up. You see here the two chucks. This is the total load frame. Most of it's interfaces through a computer now and all the instrumentation gets read here. After yield strength has been determined, remove the extensometer. Okay, so now what's happened now is they've brought this up to around yield. Okay. They determine yield strength as it's, as the response starts to deviate from linear a little bit. Now you don't want to go too far with the extensometer on because it'll start to really deform and it'll damage the extensometer. And that's what they're doing now. They've taken off the extensometer. They continue to test the failure. Now, as they continue to test, you'll really start... This, actually, as it stretches, there is a change in diameter. Actually, it elongates, but there's also a reduction in the cross-sectional area. We will talk about that. That's the Poisson effect. But you will really see it pronounced here. As it starts to plastically deform, You'll see a small region here that'll start to get better, where it really start to neck down, and that's the the, the ductal plasticity, the necking associated with that. Now I'll have pretty quick, actually. You can see it a little bit already. You can see the reduction. You can actually see the material sort of changes color. There it goes. That's sort of a classic ductal fracture type of pattern. Okay? And now he's just measuring the total elongation to fracture. I think he also measures the reduction of the diameter. Okay? Okay, so that's a pretty typical tensile test. I thought that was good to look at. Uh, and at that point, I want to stop this video.